Hey everyone, how are you this week? Hope you're doing well. We uh doing pretty good around here in Lexington. Beautiful weather week. Always appreciate the sunshine, right? Hey, uh, so welcome back to uh, what we've been calling Midweek Motivation. Been doing this for a long time now. So um, over the last few weeks, we have been in um, this topical study, if you will, uh, on the subject of things that hold us back. Uh, things that keep us from being uh, the best version of ourselves. And so to date, we've looked at things like hurt and anger and jealousy. And when that stuff, those kinds of issues uh, are left unchecked in our lives, it keeps us from experiencing the abundant life. And that's really what we want to be about, don't we? We we don't want to live stuck. We don't want to live, if you will, weighed down by some of these issues uh, in our lives. Because to be weighed down with these things takes a lot of our energy. I mean, quite literally, think about the idea of maybe carrying a 50-pound weight around with you. I mean, it's it's exhausting, it's tiring, it slows us down, it is no fun. So what we want to do is, is we want to become aware of those things that can, can get us stuck. And I can't tell you how important that is. I, you've, you've probably heard me say this before, but, but this awareness um, of what's going on in us, is crazy important to our health. It's the self-awareness kind of a thing. In fact, I was just having this conversation with some pastors yesterday. Uh, if, if we can do a better job at understanding how we tick and why we act certain ways and react certain ways and why our attitude in this moment is really good or why our attitude in this moment is really bad, if we can just kind of uh, if you will, step outside of ourselves and take this 10,000 foot view to become aware of what's going on in us, we're so much further down the road if we're able to do that. And we're able to shed some of those weights, if you will, that have a way of holding us back, keeping us stuck, keeping us from the best version of ourselves. So anyways, today we, we want to look at another issue and uh, we want to consider this issue of pride. Pride can keep us stuck. Pride can keep us from being the best version of ourselves. I and me are some of my biggest struggles. Uh, and not all pride is bad. Let, let's start there for a few moments. There, there seems to be a, a type of pride in Scripture that includes uh, some self-respect and dignity. Um, we read about this even in the greatest commandments. Remember, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as what? As yourself. And so if you don't have a healthy love for self, you're not able to fulfill that commandment. You can't love your neighbor well. Uh, so there's this healthy kind of pride. It's not thinking less of yourself, but it's thinking of yourself less which ties into humility, and we'll get to that in a few moments. There's a pride in Scripture that is healthy. There's a pride in a job well done. There's a pride in seeing others succeed. In fact, we could look to Paul in, in, a, a, lot of, in a lot of his letters to various churches, and we find this sort of language that says, hey, I'm proud of you guys. I, I'm proud of the work you guys are doing. So, so there's a good kind of pride, but then there is this bad kind of pride, this I and me and this elevation of, of ourselves. It's a selfish pride. It's a me first kind of pride. It's, it's me having to always be right. It, it's me always getting my way. It's, it's, it's stubborn in nature and it's judgmental and it thinks that I'm better than others and it also thinks that, that I deserve what everyone else has and then some. Uh, it's, it's arrogant in nature. And in some ways, if you and I were to really think about it, pride becomes that source of other issues in our lives. Um, 
when we talk about doing the wrong thing, when we talk about sin kind of stuff, when we talk about failures and mistakes in our lives, um, those things happen because we want to, right? I mean, there's a pride thing going on there. We're, we're being selfish in that moment. It, it feels a want in my life. Prideful living is living for me. So let's talk about consequences for a few moments when it comes to prideful living, bad prideful kind of living. Pride can keep us distant from God. Let, let's uh, establish that here uh, this morning. God really isn't into me kind of living. In fact, we studied this a little bit this past Sunday, if you were with us in, in church or you, you watched online. Um, pride was the issue that, that got Satan kicked out of heaven. And uh, there's quite a bit of scripture, a lot of scripture, that, that speaks into this issue of bad pride. It was a huge issue that Jesus addressed with the religious leaders of, of his day. The, the pride in their lives, how they were elevating uh, how they could execute the law and looking down on those that couldn't. James 4, 6 says this, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Uh, we, we don't have to do a lot of interpretation with that one. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. The disciple life that's our life as believers. That's what our life is to be, the disciple life, is a surrendered life to the will and way of God. God gets to tell us what to do. I stumbled on that statement a few weeks back, and it's becoming one of my new favorite statements in understanding the disciple life, and in fact, even understanding this issue of pride. Let me ask it in the form of a question. Does God get to tell you what to do? Uh, if that feels funny in any way, examine that. Try to understand why that feels funny to you. Does God get to tell you what to do? Uh, that's the disciple life. That's the humble life. That's the life that has uh, removed that bad pride from it. Uh, and speaking of a disciple life, let's say this. Pride not only can keep me distant from God, it can keep me from growing. Um, it's hard to be teachable uh, with pride in our hearts. I heard it said once that the moment my head starts swelling, my mind stops growing. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? The moment my head starts swelling, my mind stops growing. So in Proverbs 10, 17, we read this. Anyone willing to be corrected is on the pathway to life. Anyone refusing has lost his chance. That's quite the verse, isn't it? Proverbs 10, 17. Anyone willing to be corrected is on the pathway to life. Anyone refusing has lost his chance. Let's not lose our chance for the good path in our lives, for the abundant paths in our lives. We can be students for a lifetime. We should be students for a lifetime. We should be choosing to grow. And you and I can learn from each other. And we absolutely can learn from our creator. Something else with pride, bad kind of pride. Pride can keep us anxious. Truth is, with this bad kind of pride, if life is all about you, that's a full-time job, <laughs> and that's a very stressful job. How do I look? How do I get the upper hand in this situation? What do other people think of me? There's lots of image stuff going on there, and it takes a lot of energy to keep up with that. And so check this out. You don't ever get real with yourself because of this image thing. You live in this in-between of what is the real you and what is the fake you that you want other people to see when you're filled with this kind of pride. And does that sound like fun to you? I hope not, because it doesn't sound like fun to me. 
I want less stress. I want less worry. And it begins when I let go of pride. Then a, another thing, and, and this fits with this fakeness and realness thing that goes on, that tension there when we're living in this uh, bad or false kind of pride. It's going to uh, have a cost on our relationships, isn't it? You know, when you and I are, are living with bad pride, um, it's going to make our relationships rough at best. Uh, the fakeness that that we just kind of discussed for j briefly in, in that last point won't make relationships work very well. Um, conflict uh, can't be resolved in healthy ways if we are just looking after our own interests. Selfishness makes relationships weak. Selfishness makes marriages weak. Then in the family life, that whole uh, pressure to perform thing because of family pride can make those family relationships weak. Bad pride just doesn't work. And we have only uh, scratched the surface of, of some of the things that bad pride can affect. So how do we get unstuck? Um, how do we get to that better version of ourselves that God wants for us? You know, how do we start to operate with a little less of this bad kind of pride in our lives? Let me give us a couple things. One is we confess it. We admit it. Um, I don't know if you're catching on to this yet in the study, but with every one of these issues that we've talked about, uh, the first step to healing and getting better is admitting the issue. And here again, James 4.10 tells us, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. So it begins with an admission. It begins with confession. And then there's this um, choosing to learn to live in authenticity. We mentioned this earlier but, but unhealthy pride almost always moves us toward a type of fakeness in our lives because bad pride can be a false image of ourselves. It can cause us to have a very inaccurate picture of ourselves. None of us can do everything perfectly relax, take a breath. That's okay. We all have things we're good at and we all have things we're not so good at. Some can sing. Some can't. Some can dance. Some can't. Some can run and play sports really well. Others just sprain ankles, okay? So it's okay. It's okay. We don't do everything well. We don't have to live with this, this false, arrogant kind of pride that has to show everybody we can do everything really well when we can't. Now, what I'm talking about here, well, let me say it this way. What I'm not talking about here is a pity party or uh, looking down on yourself. I'm talking about an honest evaluation of our strengths and our weaknesses and getting okay with that, being okay with the way that God has made us. Let me say this. If you haven't figured this out yet, being satisfied in your own skin is truly a blessing. Ah, oh, there's so many people that just can't get comfortable with their own skin. And uh, that, is, that is high stress living. That is high pressure living. If we can get to this place where we let go of this unhealthy pride that's all about false images and all about fakeness and get to this place of just being satisfied and content who, uh, in who God is, who he says we are, and find satisfaction in that, it's an incredible blessing. It is an incredible blessing for you and for me to be comfortable in the skin that God created for each one of us. So something else about uh, getting unstuck with bad pride kind of stuff in our lives. Make life about others. Um, 
one of the most effective ways to knock down bad pride in our lives is by serving other people. Uh, rather than making life about me, 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 I go and I do for someone else. And uh, in a lot of ways, that's that's the antidote, isn't it, to uh, to selfish living, to to uh, selfish, prideful kind of living. Look at other people, serve other people, think about other people, pray for other people, and it begins to break that uh, pride cycle uh, in our lives. Ultimately, all of this is about drawing near to God and learning to become dependent on His wisdom and on His love and in His direction in our lives. Pride, as we've already learned, can keep us from God. Humility, on the other hand, opens up the door and gives us the opportunity to draw closer to God. We find God when we seek Him. What does James 4.18 say? It says this, Come near to God, and He will come near to you. So if you decide that your relationship with God is crazy important to you, and I hope you make that decision. If you decide that that relationship is crazy important to you, then you will decide there's not any room. There just isn't. There, there's not any room for false and unhealthy pride in our lives. Because bad pride, by its very nature, keeps us from being the people that God wants us to be. Let me leave you with this verse in Isaiah. It's uh, chapter 66, verse 2. My hands have made both heaven and earth. They and everything in them are mine. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will bless those who have humble and contrite hearts, who tremble at my word. The blessed life is the humble life. And if pride could potentially be an issue for you, release some of that this week and see the freedom that comes from that release. See the blessings that come from being humble and see how you begin to move toward a better version of yourself. And remember, any of these issues, any of these things that can get us stuck, we don't get unstuck on our own. We do it with God at work through his Holy Spirit in each one of us. So lean into him to help you this week become a little less stuck. You can't honor God more than by living in the dependence and humble relationship with him. Find the beauty in that relationship this week. All right. We are done. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pray together and we'll wrap it up. Uh, Lord, I thank you for this time together today. And uh, I just pray that for each one of us that we would um, we'd be real with this issue, this issue that we can be so fake about. Let's, let's take a moment and be real with it. And let's try to understand through your spirit if um, we have some unhealthy pride in our lives that it's keeping us stuck that's keeping us from the best version of ourselves. Um, if we do, Lord, if, if life has a tendency to be about me, and it's such a big temptation for every one of us every day, um, help remove that from us, Lord, because we, we don't wanna be stuck there. We, we don't wanna carry that weight around that uh, keeps us uh, tired and stressed and anxious that keeps us in this um, in-between place of, of realness and fakeness. Um, that's just yucky kind of living. And so, Lord, we, we release some of that, that uh, unhealthy kind of pride to you today. And we pray that you would fill us with, with your humility and with your goodness and grace and mercy in each of our lives. Uh, Lord, help us to help us to pay attention to the people around us. 
Um, help us to see others. And help us to, to see them the way you see them. Help us to be more aware, not only of ourselves, but more aware of the stories of the people around us. And help us to get involved in each other's lives, sharing those stories with one another, sharing your story with the people around us. Uh, Lord, this week, for those that maybe are joining right now or those that will watch this later, I just pray that you give them everything that they need to finish the week well. May they know that they are loved. May they know that you have them and you have the strength to see them through. Thank you again today for who you are. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, finish the week strong. As I just prayed, God has you. And God has enough strength to see you through. Lean into him. Draw near to God. And what? He will draw near to you. Blessings to each of you. We'll see you again real soon.